And so, to our location report from Glasgow, which has been named as the European City of Culture in 1990, to the immense chagrin of all envious Sassanacs. In Glasgow, the Irish actor Liam Neeson has been filming The Big Man with director David Leland. Mr Neeson seems to have had a pretty gratifying time lately. He's appeared with De Niro in The Mission, with Eastwood in The Deadpool, and with Cher in Suspect. Supporting roles, yes, but they got him noticed, and now it's his turn to be the star as the eponymous big man. The film is adapted from a novel by William McIlvanny, and the cast includes Joanne Wally Kilmer and that other big yin, Billy Connolly. Now read on. I wanted to get into movies in a big way. I, I was uh, based in London for seven years, and uh, I'd, I'd worked a lot in film, but there were always breadcrumb parts. There were always parts that were pieces of work that were cast. The major bulk of the casting was done in Los Angeles. And so they would come over and, and fill out the other parts with British or European actors, you know? And I, I thought, I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere staying in London, you know? And I've worked with some very good people, and I worked some, with some awful people who were made me think, you know, if these guys can get playing these type of parts, then I know I can, you know? If, so I went out, I, I packed a bag and had enough money to last for about seven weeks, eight weeks, and just went out, you know? Like Dick Whittington, you know? I think most of the British actors that have have become successful in the States have really come off of British movies. I mean, from, you know, Michael Caine through Alfie and Sean Connery through the Bond films and Hoskins through Mona Lisa, Long Good Friday. You know, it's really those films that establish them with, with the critics and with the industry. And they then go on to become stars in Hollywood pictures. And I think that this route for Liam is probably, in a way, a saner route, which is to do quality work here that is recognized outside of Britain. Um, rather than try and go and infiltrate L.A., which is what he's been doing for the last couple of years. No, but listen, listen, we've left out the greatest Scotsman of them all, Robbie Burns. Oh, aye, we're a curious and intelligent race as Scots. Yeah, we're into everything. No wonder we've discovered and invented so many things. Yeah, great enough. We'd have trouble playing this game with Hungarians. Hungarians? Bela Lagosi! And it's about a man who still believes, to some extent, in the values that he was given as a kid, but it has to find a way to reaffirm them, it has to find a way to express them that is different from, say, what his father had. And he does this by going through the experience of a fist fight for money. The fist fight was essentially a metaphor for the kind of capitalism we have just now under Thatcher. So many styles that have been created for boxing movies or fight movies that it was difficult initially to see how one would escape that that cliche. I, I think we've done it. It was the visual element of the film that appealed to me most. We in fact did an enormous amount of work on the script between when I read it and when we actually started shooting. If we're going to go into one, you'll get this trouble from him. What for? For getting a drunk? No, I never go Probably be people who say a bit violent and, and we're tired of this image. Especially me, you know, because they, they like to nail me with that, you've brought shame and disgrace on the town. I don't care, I don't give a hoot what they think. Kill, kill, behave, kill, for Christ's sake, sit. You piss in these shoes, you're a meat pie, do you hear? Go back with the dog, he'll know there's trouble. There's always a shady as well as a light side to every, but that's where all the good stories are. See, you, you can't make good and good drama with stamp lickers and commuters. They're dull and boring. They drive beige cars and they have beige lives with beige wives. And they go home and they watch beige Australian soaps on beige tellies. So the, the, the underworld and the rich tend to, to do extraordinary things because they have extraordinary wealth, usually. The Scottish setting here in Glasgow was very important to us because William's book, McIlvenny's work, is 
is very much about the Scottish mentality, the Scottish view of life. When I was trying to raise the money for the film, our American distributors, Miramax, um, almost insisted that we, set, that we set the film in Chicago and said that we will raise all the money for you, there'll be no problem, we can shoot it here in America. Because the story is, you know, it's universal. It could be Pittsburgh, it could be steel workers, it could be, it could be anywhere in the States. But it actually isn't universal if you examine it. 1990 is obviously the, the big prospect for Glasgow, European city of culture. I mean, that's, it's nice that it's happening, but I've always felt that for me, Glasgow is a city of significant culture, not necessarily with that kind of capital C. Now, with all this emphasis on the film's Scottish setting, it does seem remarkable that neither of the two main stars are even remotely Scottish. It was obviously a compromise because Liam, although he's, he's Celtic, he's from Ireland, which is better than being a Cockney or an American or, or somebody from France, you know, was obviously not a Scot. But it just came to a point where we, we just, there was no Scottish actor that I could think of or that, that Susie, who we cast, I cast all of my films with, who could come up with, that could even compare to Liam. I'm from County Antrim myself, <clears throat> and it's, um, I'm from a small community. And I, I find the similarities between that and this fictitious community in Ayrshire to be very similar. So it wasn't a huge jump. It's not that alien to me. I'm actually from Manchester. And uh, so it wasn't as if I'm from, from a place where I would never have any um, feeling for, for that's, you know, for not, not for London. Liam is supposed to be a miner. Danny Schooler is a miner who lives... But they don't say you were born and bred here thing. And it's just that thing uh, for outside people. They don't explain every day why they've got a different accent from everybody else. So I think it gives the story real credibility. Because when I worked in the shipyards here in Glasgow, there was all sorts of guys that worked in there, Englishmen and Irishmen, and nobody ever said, why have you got that accent? It's just... I like it to reflect life like it actually is. I think it actually makes it better than it would be if we were all Glaswegians or something. Jesus. And the big man should be opening in August.